Hey everyone, this is Prince Watercress, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play. This time around, it is Super Ninja Boy for the Super Nin Nintendo Entertainment System. Not even a minute in, and I can't even English. I want to believe that the game is called Super Chinese Boy for the fa Super Famicom version. I'm not quite sure. I'll probably insert something here in case it isn't. But this is a game made by Culture Brand, and the only game I've really played from them is Flying Dragon. And by Flying Dragon, I mean the N64 fighting game. I always considered Culture Brain games to be kind of quirky from looking at them because they have some interesting themes, but they don't have the best translations, and they play rather interestingly as well. There's just something about them. And I've never grown up with Super Ninja Boy. I never really saw it in action until I was an adult. And this one is so weird and quirky that I actually have to do practice runs for this one because I never grew up with this one at all. And this game is a little weird. Though it can be enjoyable. And I'm just going to press star here so I don't go rambling for too much longer on the title screen. And as soon as we press start, we end up on the main menu. Press A. You can select between one and two players. I'm just going to do the one player mode. Uh, you play as Jack. You can't change his name. And you can select the difficulty of the action play. I'm going to put it on normal. I mean, I have a guide in case I need to figure out what to do, but I want to be I'll challenge just a little bit as well. And as soon as you choo choose the difficulty, you get the story. Joyful people are living happily in China land. One day, trouble arose in the peaceful country. A mysterious spaceship fleet covered the sky of China Land. What? A 3D image in the sky! Hello, people of China Land. Please don't be scared. We are on a universal peace mission. I am the leader, Rubadoc. We are traveling the universe to promote peace. People in China Land, let's work together for universal peace. A universal peace conference was held between Rubadoc and the Emperor Chin of China Land. Rubadoc became very popular. He traveled all over China Land to promote peace. A Rubadoc boom was on. A few months later, the spaceship fleet and the Rubadoc boom left China Land. A quietness returned. I heard some troubles have happened in the capital city, Yokan. They were crazy about peace a little while ago, but troubles now? Anyway, looks like we got a job to do. Let's go to Yokon. And here we are on the overworld. The town to our exact north is Yokon, so let's go over there. And from here, we can move around a control pad. A lets us talk to people. Start pick, pauses the game and gives us the menu. We can look at our items. We can look at our magic. We can look at our equipment, our status, the treasures we have. And we have a password in case if we need to stop play and keep track of all our stuff later on we'll be able to press this we'll be able to select this by pressing A and we can get a password you can also get one from the convenience store I'll mention that in a couple of minutes for now I'm going to talk to people by just walking up to them and pressing A only a few hard workers go out with girls I wish I could go many girls want to go out with me yeah and, no, I'll just talk to a few more people. Welcome to Yukon. That's too bad. He's going away. I wanted to see him before he leaves. 
When Rubbit Doc came here, I got excited at him. But I'm sad because now he's leaving. He's a nice man. I'm in love with him. I'm too old for him, though. And from here, we're, there are some areas that we can go to. There's the item shop. And when you start a game, you start out with 160 Sen. Sen is the currency for this game. And we're going to have the beat up monsters. So we're going to get more Sen. I'm going to go ahead and get the Bantam gear by selecting it with the control pad and the A button. And then when he says anything else, press A. You can select what you need to again. I'm going to pick the Bantam gear and the skin gauntlet. This will give me offense for my arms and body. The Yokon helmet per gives you head defense, but I'm not going to buy that because we're going to find another helmet shortly. There's also sweet buns, which recover about 40 HP. You can carry up to 8 at a time. And dragon eggs, which works as continues in case you die in a action scene. More on those later. And help you get out of pits in the fighting scenes when you fight monsters. These things cost 25 and you can carry up to 15 at a time. I'm just going to get the sweet buns for now. And I'm completely out of money. So we got two drag two sweet buns. Almost said dragon eggs. Two sweet buns, the skin gauntlet, and the Bantam armor. We're gonna need to get some Sen before we leave. Welcome to our hotel. I have you have a nice rest. And by going into the inn, you can take a rest for free. And you can refill all of your HP and NP. NP. Ninpo points. Those are like the, uh, the MP, the magic points for this game. Yeah, you don't have magic points or MP. You have NP. And this little hut with the C sign next to it is a convenience store. Hello. Welcome to the convenience store. You will go on to the next level if you get 18 experience points. What can I get you? And from here, you can revive your ally in a two-player game for a price. You can switch between one and two players. You can get a password, and that's pretty much about it. You always want to come in here, nevertheless, because the game keeps track of the last convenience store that you went to. And when you, if, if you ever die, you go back to the last convenience store you went to. So that is something to keep in mind. Many men were taken, and my boyfriend was one of them. I'm very lonely. Most all the men were taken by thieves. I heard they are in Mount Sandpin. Am I going north over to this bridge? We can talk to the more people, so... Things are getting a little serious now. Do you know about dragon eggs? If not, I'll tell you about it. Even if you fall into a hole in the special field stage, you can restart with an egg from the beginning of the stage. Find it. Uh, the special field stage are the action sequences, the little platforming areas that we will be going through off and on throughout the game. When you arrive at a new town, go to a convenience store first. And that was for the reasons that I just mentioned. My family was taken by them too. I need somebody to play a game. Again, not exactly the most efficient English. Somebody would, like, some random Super NES hacker would have been able to, you know, translate it a little more efficiently, but... Hey! Culture Brain tried! I won't knock them for that. And here we meet Emperor Chen. I'm in big trouble. What's the matter, your highness? Robbers from Mount Sandpin in the east broke into... Okay, is it Sandpin or Sandpin? Make up your mind game broke into the town and jewelry and, and took jewelry and the prime workers away. I don't know what to do. Don't worry. We'll take care of them. Go see a prophet in the back of this palace. He's quite good. And that's why you want to go to this double door hut first before you go into this one. I'm not sure if hut is the right word. I should just be calling them houses. I am no true Domus, a great fortune teller. 
I'm here to help you. Well, can we trust this crappy looking old man? What are you mumbling about? I'll foretell your future now. Mmm, you have an important task of wiping out robbers. Go north to the cave in the mountain to Horizon Gate and find Rick there. Now take this magic, escape leaf. We believe your words, mister. Thank you. Remember, my name is No True Domus, the Great. And we now have our first spell of the game, the first magic of the game, as does the game calls it magic. Magic Leaf. Oh, actually, Escape Leaf. And I need to drink some tea because I'm getting parched. Escape Leaf lets you escape a battle in case you can't win and is 100% guaranteed to work. I don't think it'll work on bosses, though. I forgot to mention that sometimes uh, Culture Brain games are curiously programmed, too. I should probably mention an example after some time. Because it's been a long time since I played Flying Dragon on N64. But anyway, now that we've talked, pretty much talked to everybody, and we have our mission, which is to go to that mountain entrance right over there. It's right there on the screen, just to the north of Yokai. We could do that, but I do want to walk around and level up to level 2. Whenever you see the screen zoom in like that, you know that you're going to get a battle. Oh, and that little sound effect, too. That also helps. Right now, we're going to be fighting some Kappas. We could press B to back out, or we could select run and press A, but we're going to select bout. And in this game, and in these, these scenes, you can press Y to attack, you can press B to jump, you can hold Y to run, which makes it easier to get to enemies at times. And these battle areas always end when you beat up a certain amount of enemies. And once you complete a battle, you'll get experience points and money. So we've got 12 of the necessary 18 experience points. I had to think about that for a second, as I always do in a, in a live commentary Let's Play. So I might as well just go ahead and walk around a little more. And we now have those two, those guys, those guys with the little golden helmets. The Kappas and the gold helmet guys, they will attack you if given a chance. Also, I forgot to talk about these P, these P boxes. Ah, uh, I could have gotten a sword there. But we now have 74 Sen and 12 experience points. And we now have increased our level to level 2. Let's go ahead and go back to the town. Those P boxes, those blue P boxes, they contain items. If you get an M, you'll basically... Okay, I'm going a little ahead of myself. When you open a P box by punching it, you get a question mark orb. You can get an M icon, which adds one M point to your total. Those will come in useful later on. But, you do want to get as many as you can early on anyway. The dollar sign gives you more money whenever you complete a battle. There are also pod stickers that you can get, which recover 30% of your total HP when you pick them up, though. They're a little hard to find. Also, there are skulls which take away one M point. You definitely don't want to get those. And the question mark orbs, the item within them, it's always random. So how much money do I have? It's not what I wanted. I should probably go to the inn. Just to be safe. Alright, so we can't use it now, but at least we can use it. And how much send do I have? 98. 
Might as well get three dragon eggs and two more sweet buns. Now that that's taken care of, we are going to go to this cave right here. If I can actually get Jack into it. We are now in the Yukon Tunnel. This is a rather short area. And we're going to be finding some more enemies here. While you're in the Yokon Tunnel, you're going to find out that the it's encounter rate in this game is awfully high. It's just really, really random. You can take like a few, get, you can get a battle every few steps. You can just take a few steps and get into a battle like soon after your last one. And it's easy to level up in the Yokon Tunnel if you just take every single encounter with the enemy that you run in, run into. And here's a new enemy. It's one of those tiger enemies that looks like one of those little drum things. I forget what they're called. But uh, basically, the drum in question is the one that was used in Karate Kid Part 2. And now I can't even remember it off the top of my head. But all you have to do is just beat up one of them, just get right in close, stay on him, pick him up and throw him with Y when he's down if you have to. That's how I've been throwing enemies. And you'll take him down. And we are now at level 3. Which is cool. There are two routes to get up to this part of the path. I took the longer one in case... Or the seemingly longer one in case I got more enemies. And it looks like I'm definitely getting more enemies. I'm going to open this up to see what's in it. Ah, oh, I got a skull. And these guys can recover while you're carrying them. Monsters can do that, so you do want to be careful. And we're getting quite a bit of money doing things. And it's back to the, the bird enemies again. The birds and the kappas. And that... For some reason that gave me... For some reason I shot a fireball. Don't know why. But I'm beating these guys down. And it takes a little bit of effort to get these enemies to attack you. Like, you have to stand there for a, at least for a little while for them to attack you. But once they do, they don't let up. You are you don't really have invisibility frames in this game. So, you can get hit as soon as you get back up. And that can be really bad. And I was just laying waste to those enemies right there. 24 experience points, 48 sen. We're now at level 4. I'm going to be level 5 or 6 by the time I get out of here. And you can tell, just from me playing this, how high the encounter rate is. And I'm not shooting fireballs anymore, so maybe there was something in there that was allowing me to do it. Ooh. I couldn't pick him up, and he nearly stabbed me. That would not have been fun. I need to start breaking more of these pee boxes, because it is possible to get, like, two money icons and get over 100 cent in a battle. I was doing that during the practice run. And by going up to this chest, we get the dragon helmet. A word about equipment. When you buy equipment or find in a treasure chest, you will automatically equip it. The reason I didn't buy the Yokon helmet was because the dragon helmet would have e immediately superseded it as soon as I got it. And a weird, little weird thing about this game, which I do like, if you try to buy weaker armor, the game tells you the armor is weaker than what you currently have and won't allow you to buy it. So you're save, you can save money doing that. The game kind of watches out for you in that regard, and that's kind of cool. 
And watch, I'm gonna get one more encounter before I go. Guess not. But, we are now going to go west. And we got these guys. There's one set of enemies that I do not want to run into. Ugh. And it would stink if I did. Oh, I gotta fight more than one now. I gotta fight two. But we got more experience and more money out of that, so that's pretty cool. We just need to keep going to the west, I think, and we'll be able to get to where we need to go. There it is. That is Horizon Gate. We still got one more battle, and I will easily take it. I don't want Skulls game. There we go. Obviously, the non kappa and non-bird enemies are giving me more experience points, but I'll take any battle that I can get. And here we are at Horizon Gate, where we need to do a little bit of training before we can head to Mount Sampin. But that will have to wait until the next video. Join me next time when we go through the training at Horizon Gate, because that's what we're going to go through as soon as we talk to Rick. I played a little bit of this game before playing this, for real, for the channel. Not much, but at least I know what to do in the early parts of the game. But I do want to see if I can beat it in, well, we'll see. Until then, this is Prince Watercress. Take care, stay safe, and thanks for watching!